So we are now at the time in our program where we have our community moment. Uh, that is a thought for the day or something somebody's been reading or something they want to share uh, that does not exceed 10 minutes. This week we have Grant Hunter. Grant Hunter is an Oasis attendee since 2014, husband, father of three, local anesthesiologist. Did I get that right? A master's degree, and I can pronounce words. So let's hope he doesn't put us to sleep. Uh, 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 Mike wrote that joke. <laughs> anyway, I'm not even done. This guy's got a cool rap sheet. Enthusiast of science, skepticism, and running. Uh, host of the Oasis community group in the Woodlands. So uh, Grant is here to uh, talk about um, logical fallacies. So let's welcome Grant Hunter. Um, first of all, before anyone thinks that this is an original idea, this is uh, not. Uh, so, uh, one of my favorite podcasts is called The Skeptic's Guide to the Universe, and on there they have a segment that they like to call Name That Logical Fallacy. Um, and so I blatantly just stole it. <laughs> but it's a uh, you know, uh, form of flattery, I guess. This, anyone know what this is? That is a uh, sodium chloride, or a grain of salt. Please take one now. I am an enthusiast, uh, not an expert in this field. So what is a logical fallacy? Uh, it's a flaw in reasoning or an illusion of thought, trick of the mind to get to wrong conclusions. Um, it can be used, they can be used as blinders or weapons depending on who's implementing them. Uh, so lots of people will use the uh, logical fallacy um, for themselves to believe things that otherwise they couldn't. Um, or shouldn't, and some people will want you to believe something and they will de either deliberately or not deliberately, um, unknowingly, use them as weapons to get you to believe what uh, they want you to believe. So a quick note, uh, oops, so, uh, since I don't know how to go, well, do I not go back? Yes, okay. Um, there's different structures, this, this is really a 30 minute lecture, so it's gonna be we're just going to slice this in half. So uh, formal versus informal fallacies. We're going to concentrate primarily on informal fallacies. A formal fallacy is a structure problem. That's all you have to remember. Um, a, an informal fa fallacy is a content problem. Now, if you're talking about arguments, sound versus unsound, just uh, the, a sound argument is both true and has valid structure. An unsound argument has false premises, and that's part of the problem, um, And uh, but it can have valid structure, but still be, and therefore it's an, unva uh, I'm sorry, an unsound argument. Um, so an example of formal uh, fallacy would be Hitler liked dogs, Hitler was evil, therefore liking dogs is evil. There is no way to get from point A to point to, from the premises to the conclusions of that. So that is a formal problem, a structural problem. An informal problem would be, uh, our informal fallacy, an example would be some believe that slavery is always wrong, some believe slavery is always right, therefore the right amount of slavery must be somewhere in the middle. <laughs> that is a content problem. Um, the uh, <laughs> the uh, stated premises fail to support, uh, to fail to adequately support the uh, ridiculous conclusion there. So, um, now a little bit about sound versus unsound. Um, so uh, on the left, both of these are valid, um, uh, but one is sound and one is unsound. So to demonstrate that point, uh, Obama was born in Hawaii. One must be a natural born US citizen to be president of the United States, Article 2, Section 1, anyone curious. Um, Obama is eligible for the US presidency. That is both sound and valid because the premises are true and the structure is uh, a valid structure. So therefore, it's a sound argument. Um, an unsound argument, Obama was born in Kenya. One must be natural born US citizen to be president of the United States. Obama is not eligible for the US presidency. That is a valid argument. And it is an unsound argument, however. It is not true because the premises aren't true, but the structure is all we're talking about. So we're talking about validity versus uh, the soundness of one. So just a little semantics to go over there. So unsound argument, but a valid structure. Our focus today, I've said this already, is, is uh, on informal fallacies. Let's play. Fallacy number one. Dr. Quackfield says that vaccines cause autism. Sorry. So I'm not going to get my children vaccinated. Haven't you seen the movie Vaxxed Sheeple? So, 
Dr. Quackfield, so is this a, an appeal to emotion, an appeal to authority, appeal to stupidity, false cause, or too quickly? Okay, so, yeah, go ahead. Any, uh, anyone? Appeal to authority. Very, any, any other thoughts? Good, don't change that. Oh, I'm sorry. There, that's supposed to be up there, so you guys can see that. Right, okay, so, no, no. The right answer is an appeal to authority. So saying that someone, uh, or saying that because an authority thinks something is true, it must be true. Uh, another way to look at this is that since I say that this is a logical fallacy known as appeal to authority, it must therefore be an appeal to authority. <laughs> Get around that. <laughs> Love card. Okay. Fallacy number two. Even though it's only uh, Jane, even though it's only one block away, you shouldn't drive, John. John, why not? You're stupid, Jane. Well, you've been drinking and. If you make it, the next time, you might be willing to drive further and further still the next time. Where does it stop? John, <clears throat> you don't know what you're talking about. It's okay for me to drive because I won't slide down that slippery slope. I, slope. I know my limits. What is John's fallacy? C. An homonym? Anybody? Anybody else? No, slippery slope. Slippery slope. Okay, what is John's fallacy? So John's fallacy is the fallacy oh, fallacy. Exactly. So the reason uh, ad hominem is just a personal attack. You're right, he did call her stupid, but he didn't base his, uh, base his reasoning for, not dri or for driving on the fact that she was stupid. He based it on the fact that she supposedly committed the slippery slope fallacy. So the slippery slope just says, well, if we allow A to happen, then Z is guaranteed to happen, therefore you should not let A happen. Um, an ad hominem attack, uh, that's a personal attack, and the fallacy fallacy, don't be this guy, um, is when you mistakenly, let you read that, say that their, their conclusion is wrong because they use the fallacy to get to that conclusion. That doesn't, you can always, they may have a right conclusion, just because they were terrible at arguing it doesn't mean that they were wrong. Uh, and so we, a lot of times if you point out that logical fallacy, um, you may be committing that fallacy fallacy yourself, so it's best just to make sure that they're using other reasons to get to their conclusion. Fallacy three. Um, Jesus Christ, Son of God, is our personal Lord and Savior, as, he's, as he sacrificed himself for our sins and rose from the dead, as outlined in his Holy Scripture. Um, now this, uh, you know, I'm not trying to be disparaging here, uh, but the, um, the, uh, this is um, something that, you know, one and a half million people use and, um, uh, and is, a, in their mind, logical. Um, and uh, there is a specific fallacy in that. I'm not, um, uh, you know, not using the fallacy fallacy myself here, but there is a fallacy within that. So is this begging the question, appeal to authority, a loaded question, Texas sharpshooter or false cause? Okay, so um, the correct answer uh, is begging the question. Uh, very good. So begging the question is a circular argument, and I will show why that's a circular argument uh, in the next slide. So. Um, Basically, the way to remember this is that circular, circular reasoning is mostly bad because it's not very good. <laughs> uh, and I just put Texas sharpshooter just because we're in Houston. That's the only reason. That must have been a red herring. That's a, yes, excellent. Okay, so um, the so the demonstration of as to why that line of thinking is fallacious. Uh, it is outlined here. So uh, the Bible is the word of God, but how can you be sure that it's the word of God? Because the Bible tells us so. But why should we believe the Bible? Because the Bible is infallible. But how do you know it's infallible is because the Bible is the word of God. So you can see how that just goes round and round in circles. And that is a great example of begging the question. Okay, my time is running low. I want everyone to take this into account. For those who... For, all right. For those who can't see that, uh, it does cut science spending now, save our wheelchair friends. Uh, U.S. spending on science, space, and technology is in green, and uh, you can know that it directly correlates with people who died by falling out of wheelchairs between the years 1999 and 2009. 
Uh, that, uh, so to me that's blatantly obvious that we just need to cut science spending. Uh, no, just kidding. That, uh, remember, the correlation does not equal causation. That is known as the false cause fallacy. This, penguins are black and white. Some old TV shows are black and white. Therefore, some penguins are old TV shows. <laughs> Logic, another thing penguins aren't very good at. That's it. Thank you very much.